I know what else I want to do. I want to, um, I want to play the melody by itself. So let's solo the melody. And let's listen to our brand new and improved melody. So, ladies and gentlemen, sirs and madams, wherever you are, thank you for your time and attention and interest. This is a recap of Composing a Ballad, Part 10, Moving Forward. So, we re-entered using a napkin diagram, and we said, upon reflection, we realized that we were working with variations one and two to attempt to push into new territory. And the familiar territory was chord function, among other things. The C and the F and the G and the whole traditional sound. And what we're trying to get into was, we said, we're trying to take the C major scale, which was in variation one, and use the 4-3 chord, C, F, G. Then in variation two, we stuck with C major, but we're using extended chords, the C2-2, two, two, the D3-2, two, and the F4-2, and then pushing our way, once again, into variation three, which is using full tonality, A3-3, three, three, D2-4, and A flat 33. Yes, yes, yes. So, on the way, we started thinking about circle line composing. And then we said, well, you know, now what? How do we keep moving forward? And we said, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna focus on variation three. And go back to variation three. And so that's what we did. And we went through each row of variation three, and we had done at one of the previous streams, we'd figured out all the places where we had passing notes that went from a melody to a melody note. And we made ourselves a checklist. We said, make sure all the bass cadences are in place, make sure all the backbone notes are in place and agree with the cadences, Make sure the melody beat notes are in place and agree with the backbone notes. And we did all that. And then we said, now let's put the passing notes in place and make sure they agree with the scale, C full tonality, and they're not in the bass cadence. And the reason all that mattered was because of this. Well, because of that, and because of this. So, so if you follow our checklist, we said, yep, they're the backbone and the melody notes 
which are which are the red notes here they're all consistent with each other there's no backbone note that is outside of a, a bass cadence note you know check 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 and then we put in the passing notes which are orange notes and we said make sure that the no passing note is in the cadence the bass cadence nothing in here nothing in here and we got that check 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 we even had to go a bit extra because it turned out that some of the um, some of the original melody notes that we had just copied over from variation one into variation three uh, ironically became included in the cadence so we had to go through and change them so down here a lot of these passing notes uh, had to be uh, selected over here and and this checklist we used it to to where possible try to kind of pick the same passing notes where they seem to make sense but ultimately when we couldn't tell from this pattern approach we just listened and we said what sounds right what sounds good and we found ourselves referring to our good old friend the consonants scale where sometimes there was a 3-1 chord with the lower consonants and sometimes there was a 3-3 three, three chord with well not that one a 2-3 chord with a higher consonants and we just sort of worked with our listening and and played back and forth between minor mode feeling and major mode feeling realizing that c full tonality by definition contains both so after we did all that this is the mel well if we compare the melodies and why not Let's, let's listen to the first variation melody by itself. And the comparison here is... Okay, then we go to... Well, let's jump down to uh, line three, because that's a break feel. So even though there's kind of a bit of a higher leap, da, 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 than we uh, than we did in here, it still had the same arc shape. And then if we come down to well, let's listen to line four. Traditional. Five. No. It's, and then the, it ends up this way. And uh, the variation ends up like this. So what was good about this was we were able to do our consistency checking here and make sure that the passing notes were in place 
we had passing notes in every point in variation three that we had passing notes in variation one. We also made sure all that those passing notes in place agreed with the C full tally scale. We, we didn't allow D flat or G flat, which are not allowed in anything. And we also verified that they were outside the bass cadence so that we would get the orange and the red going together down, down the road. Because we suspect we're going to go back and put in passing chords uh, like we did in the last stream. And we used our checklist to go row by row and make sure all of these consistency checks were in place. So what that means is variation one and variation three have the same melodic arcs consistent with their own scales. In one case C major scale, in the other case C full. And the cadence arcs are consistent in terms of energy changes with the one exception that whereas variation one had a dominant chord as an option, in variation three there are no dominant chords. So we use an ambivalent chord. But other than that, every place there was a tonic, we used a tonic. A subdominant, we used a subdominant. And then for every dominant, we used the ambivalent. And what's interesting is to uh, listen. when you let the, the full cadences play. Why do we think that's interesting? Because we still have more interesting things to do here. These cadences can be turned into, well, all right, the first thing is probably the thing we're going to do most importantly is is take chords like that you look down here that's a two two chord and and make a nice cadence out of it uh, just like in the last session we turned this into a two two three chord and we laid it in there and we listened to it and it, it sounded frankly cool Right there. Na da 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 da, na da 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 da. Da 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 da. So we have the option to do that in here. We would start by uh, we'd add a layer, add a row, uh, a new instrument called passing chords. And, uh, and put these in here. Every time we have the passing situation, we've got this that we can add. In the meantime, however, <laughs> we haven't done that. So the first variation does not have passing chords in it, and it sounds like this. sink in. Close your eyes for a second. So when I hear that, you know, I hear poignant beauty. I hear sadness and affirmation. And you hear what you hear. Also, I know 
in my mind, some of you are saying, oh my God, can't you turn down the bang, bang, bang? And yes, we will turn it on the banging. Right now we're listening for the texture. I would call, you know, reducing the volume of the backbone orchestration. Anyway, now let's hear our third variation, this fully operational third variation which has its passing notes in place. here and that I don't yet quite have words for except the image that just kind of came to mind was being yanked along come with me uh, kind of a fierce determination I'm not gonna let it be come with me <clears throat> yank drag pull throw on the throwing on the wagon and coming with not maliciously like ferociously we're going to get this done we're going to handle this so it's like beyond affirmation it's like determination something like that so sirs and madams wherever you are thank you for your time and attention and interest as always and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next stream and who knows what this has been moving forward so we'll probably keep on moving forward but i'm thinking about adding in those passing chords so as always keep on streaming